All right, get ready to start. Here we go. The kicking will be Mitchell Schaefer. The 5'6 junior will kick off for the Zebras tonight. Back deep for Wabash. Trying to look and get some numbers. Yeah. Number 11 and 15. 15 and 11. Ooh, a little squib kick going to be taken at the 38, and that's not where he got, gets tackled. That was picked up by number 87, and that was Colin Price. So that's where they're going to give him to the 39, and that's where Wabash will start first and 10. Here comes the 6-1 sophomore, the left-handed quarterback, Isaac Wright. Will bring his squad to the line. First play of the contest. Wright will go out of the shotgun. Yep, we got one, one in the backfield. Oh, he had the official move because he is a left-handed quarterback. Fakes it, holds on to it, dies forward, but that's going to be a loss. Does that count as a sack? Is that an official sack, Val? Uh, that is a sack, sack, which means it's a Big Mac sack attack. <laughs> First play of the game, and you can uh, get online later tonight and take your program to Rochester McDonald's tomorrow. Buy one, get one free. The Big Macs from Rochester McDonald's. The Big Mac sack. They have a double slot on the right side. Right. Back to throw this time. Looks. Releases it right up the middle. That's going to be caught across the middle by number 17, Brooks. Brooks is going to be down right at midfield, and they're going to give him a first down. First down is being brought to you this evening by Rice Lincoln of Warsaw, 250 north across from Walmart. So it's first and 10 now for Wabash. Who caught that? 17, Brooks. Out of the shotgun again. Right, hands it off this time. Goes right back up the middle, and that is 34 learned. And I'm telling you what, Wright got nailed yep. right as he handed that thing off. He got up shaking the cobwebs off of that one. Yeah, he, <laughs> they, they blitzed Dimming up, up the middle, and, and he's like going, I, I'm glad I kind of handed that ball off. They give him two yards. It'll be second and eight now from the Zebra 48. Wabash. With the possession, right out of the shotgun. He's got learned to his right. Sending in motion is Brooks. Brooks gets the handoff. Brooks turns it back up towards the middle, and he's going to be stopped for maybe a yard. It'll bring up third and seven now for the Wabash Apaches. Yeah, they did that kind of that jet sweep, but he kind of had to chop his steps a little bit, and he couldn't do it on the, on, in, in rhythm of his run, and which kind of helped our defense. Just under 10 minutes to go here in the first quarter on the true value scoreboard. Wabash in their opening possession. Right, out of the shotgun. Learned to his left this time. Rolls to the near side, looking to throw it. Finally does, and it's caught by number 11, Grant. Antonio Grant with the completion, and that's another first down. Being brought to you by Rice Lincoln of Warsaw. 13-yard pass. So another first down for Wabash. Wabash moving down the field. They got good field position to start. And, they, and, and, and the, his offensive line did a good job of, of giving him time to see that. Learn now stands to the left of right. Right. Hands off to Learn. Learn around the left tackle. Met at the line by uh, Zebra, and that was uh, Fervita. Yeah. They kind of just met and both dropped. <laughs> they did. It was, you know, they good tackle. He got he got low to hit him, but but so did the running back. He got lower. Ball sitting at the 29 yard line. It's going to be second and about four. I'll give him six on the pickup. Yeah, this is the type of play that you you got to you almost got like a free down to pass if you want to because you with it being second down and four. Right, again out of the shotgun. Fakes it, 
keeps it this time. He tries to run it himself, and he's going nowhere. In fact, he might have lost a yard, and he does. They mark him down at the 30. It'll be now third and five for Wabash. Yeah, and, and that was a set draw. He, he kind of read, I think, the linebacker, and, and then he, he pulled it out and kept it. McKee on the stop. Zebra's uh, end zone, or the Wabash end zone, has a bunch of zebras in it as it's a uh, youth night tonight. That'll come up at halftime. Over 100 youth getting introduced tonight. Right to throw. Throws it to his right. It's complete right at the sticks. We'll wait and see. And it is caught by yep. number two, and that's Daughtry, and they do give him another first down. A Rice-Lincoln first down. Yeah, but he just kind of did about a, about a six-yard curl, and, and we were giving him room, and he just he just kind of stopped right in front of us. 8-10 to go here in the opening quarter. Scoreless as Wabash still on their first possession. Zebras deferred to the second half. Right out of the shotgun. Twins to the far side. Comes to the near side and looks. Now he gets it out to the tight end, and that's number 87. That's Price. And a price is good inside the red zone. And that'll be down inside the 10 as well. Red zone being brought to you by Mid-America, Farm Credit Mid-America, securing the future of rural communities and agriculture. It'll be first and goal now for the Apaches from the six. Yeah, in this drive right now, Wright's four for four for 49 yards. Split out two to the far side. Grant to the near. Learn now goes behind right out of the shotgun. Learn gets it. Learn right back up the middle, and they're going to give him maybe a yard. It'll be second and goal from the five. We did a good job there of, of pinching that in and not giving much room up the middle. We'll see if they kind of, uh, you know, if he maybe like he did that before that draw, he might he might pull it out and then t- and try to do a, a bootleg around the end. Daltrey goes split to the far side. To the near side now is Grant and Brooks. Right, the handoff to Learn. Learn tries to go right back up the middle, and he's going to get another yard or so, and it'll be third and goal from about the four. So it'll be interesting to see. The only thing is that the wide side of the field is not to his strong arm right, right, right now. So that's the one thing. If it was, I guess maybe seeing him – rolling him out a little bit and giving him the option to either to run or pass, but they, but they still might do that here. 6.20 to go here in the opening quarter. Already eating almost six minutes off the clock. Right, getting everybody in position. Learn now goes to his right side. And we got a penalty marker and a penalty against Wabash. Wabash. That, that, the split in, and that's one thing is being a former split in. You never jump off sides because you're looking in. <laughs> right. I mean, there's not you're not really listening for anything. So that'll back them out. Put them about the 10 yard line. It'll be third and goal from the 10. Right, looking to the sideline to get the play from the coaching staff. See, Interesting they, fact yeah. from Peru and North Miami. North Miami only with about 20 kids on the sideline tonight. Oh. Right, looks to the sideline again, out of the shotgun. Going to have to hurry, two, one, just gets it off, and coaching staff got the timeout right before the snap. We'll keep it here and give you an opportunity to tell you about Culligan of Fulton County, better water, pure and simple. First Federal Savings Bank. They don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Fulton County best one tire. The most important person to them is you, RTC Communications. Phone, cable, and Internet. That's RTC Communications. Shepherd Chevrolet, Buick GMC of Rochester, where they always treat you like family. Fulton County REMC, making it better tomorrow since 1936. Smith Farm Store, serving farm and home since 1971. Smith Sawyer and Smith Insurance, insurance bonds and wealth management. Woodlawn Hospital, where care and compassion meet. And Moose Lodge, Manitow Moose Lodge, Family Fun Center, 1107. Come out and enjoy family fun tonight. Just a few of the proud supporters of Zebra football here all season long. 542 remains on the clock. Yep, and the one thing to look at when I was looking at their stats, if they don't make this, they have not attempted a field goal yet this year. 
So it'd be interesting to see if they would maybe kick it. It's, it's a short. I mean, it'd be a long PAT. Right. Or do they go for it? Third so. and ten with the ball on the ten. Actually, it'd be third and goal from the ten. Five forty-two after the timeout. Right will bring him to the line out of the shotgun. He's got trips to the far side, and he's got Grant to the near. Nobody in the backfield. Right. Rolls to his right, looks to throw, throws it up, and it is complete touchdown Wabash. Dillon, Andrew Dillon, the 5'9 junior, was the recipient of the throw. 10-yard touchdown pass. Yep, and he, and he honestly, from our, our angle that we had here, he almost could have ran it in, too. And the swinging gate, well, closing gate, whatever, is kind of spread it out. And they'll go for the PAT. Kick is blocked by the Zebras. So with 5.36 to go here in the first quarter, Wabach takes their first possession to the end zone and puts six on the board. Zebras will have their first possession when we come back. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM Sports, and RTC TV 4 field the zebras will getting ready to get their first possession that was a 12 play 61 yard scoring drive the scoring drive being brought to you by rochester ford home of the lifetime oil change really not nothing fancy they nope. just uh, nice and uh, gradually a couple runs couple passes and and yep. next thing you know they were in the end zone kind of like uh as I was reading Val's uh, thing about the game, it's kind of like the NFL style. They're going to run it. They're going to pass it, spread you out. Um, so but people don't realize how big that block PAT could end up being by the end of the game. Yeah. Kickoff being brought to you by Oil Change Express. The Zebras will uh, go over Swango's head. He'll pick it up at about the 25, and the whistle comes from the backfield. Not sure what the flag is about. We'll find out here momentarily. The head official threw the flag, and he's thrown it near the 30. And he's coming to the zebra sideline. Is he? Did he fair catch it? Oh, or I should say, signal for it, and but then ran. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, officials are talking it over. 534 and here to go in the first quarter. Randy Wynn, Ray Davis, glad you could join us as the official will come to the sideline and explain it to Coach Schaefer. That must have been. That must have been what he called. So the, they will mark it off from, I assume, the spot where he got it. They mark it from about the 25-yard line. It's a five-yard penalty. penalty. Put it back at the 20. So, so the Zebras will start at their own 20. First possession, 5, yeah. 34 to go in the and quarter. It, and it could have been not even the guy who was going to get the ball. It could have been somebody else yeah. on the team that, that, that put the fair catch up. So the Zebras will have it. Swango up under center. The handoff, dimming right up the middle. And he'll pick up almost two. We'll give him two. It'll be second and eight. Yep, and you can kind of see they were they were going to, they were keen on him that first play. So we'll just kind of see how we how how we handle that because we did a pretty good job of that last week where Whitco started shooting those gaps to hand on, and then we started bouncing some things outside. Swango. Given the play from the sideline, and he'll take it to the teammates. Samsel comes to the near side. Swango, again, up under center. Lunau in motion. Lunau gets the pitch. Lunau turns the corner. Lunau going to be brought down at about the 26-yard line. Pick up of about five. Yeah, they'll give him five. It'll be yep. third down and a... About four. four Clock rolls, four and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Zebras with their first possession of the contest, trailing 6 nothing. As Wabash went 61 yards on their first possession. 
Swango up under center to Deming. Deming breaks a hole. Deming across the 40. Excuse me, across the 35, and that's going to be another Rice-Lincoln first down. The first for the Zebras here tonight as they're going to mark the ball down at about the 37-yard line. So they've got a first and 10. Seven, yeah. Deming ran off the left side that time, found that hole. Swango up under center. The handoff comes to the near side, and that appeared to be Fervita, maybe? It looks like it was. Yep, Fervita with the handoff, and he'll pick up a yard. It'll be second and nine. And and, and the good thing about that, when, when we're running those guys other than Deming, Deming's doing a really good job of blocking for, for those guys, so he's opening up some holes. It looks like maybe if we can just hit those holes a little bit quicker, yeah. I think we can get some, maybe some more yards out of it. First, or excuse me, second and nine. Swango, under center. The handoff to Deming. Deming breaks free. Deming on his horse at the 40, the 30, the 25, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Alec Deming. 10, 11, 66 yards, looks like. 61. 61 yard. Yeah. 61 yard run by Alec Deming. And that looks just that that ran looked just like last week at Wicko. On for the point after will be Parker Wallace. Snap down. Oh, oh. That, and it's going to be a bad snap. Swango couldn't handle it. And it is now 6-6. 3.06 to go here in the first quarter. Both teams score on their first possession. Wolbash will have their second when we come back. Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. It's not even his problem. 580. Back here at Barnhart Field, the Zebras strike on their first possession as well. And we're knotted at 6 with 6.06 to go. That scoring drive of five plays, 80 yards. Alex Dimming goes 61 yards for the touchdown, bringing brought to you by Rochester Ford, home of the lifetime oil change. Kickoff being brought to you by Oil Change Express. Here's Schaefer. Much better kick this time. Going to be taken at about the 18. Taken by number two, and that's Daughtry. Daughtry comes to the near side and steps out of bounds. And a going to say at the 34 yard line and that's where Wabash will start first and 10 with three minutes to go here in the first quarter tied 6-6 at Barnhart Field 16 yard return a much better kick he got some height under it Pioneer what 6-0 Pioneer 6-0 so quick score for Pioneer 6-0 they're coming out and they got uh, slot right. No, got double slot. Double slot. Right. Sends Daughtry in motion. The handoff goes to Daughtry. Daughtry tries to cut it back up, and he is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage, but he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. And he was met by Mr. Dimming. <laughs> Mr. All-Around. Does it on offense, does it on defense. Yeah, and and the one thing that people you know that people that are watching from the stands don't realize that he made, he made that tackle, but the defensive line allows them to make right. that tackle because yeah. they're they're taking up that lineman and, and giving him gaps. Right again, out of the shotgun for the Apaches. Split both ways. Right, looking to throw this time, goes deep, throws over the top, and it's going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was 17, and that's Brooks. That was his first incomplete pass so far this game. He's 5 for 6 for 59 yards and a touchdown. And you can see, like you said, Southmore. He's got yeah. a pretty good arm. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so it'll be a third and 10. Big stop on third down here for the Zebras. 
Okay. Right, kind of a confusion in the backfield yeah. as he uh, sets his offense. Play clock down to five. Trips to the near side. Right. Throws it out, and it's almost picked off, but it blasts complete to Grant. He'll get to the 40. It'll be fourth and about five for the Apaches, and they will punt it away. And that was McKee. It went right over the top of yeah. his head. I don't think he was quite expecting that. Or no. Uh, he was actually, uh, it almost hit him in the helmet. <laughs> if he was about three inches taller, it would have. Lou now the deep man for the Zebras. Back to punt is 74, Grayson DeBoard for the Apaches. 140 to go here before the end of the first quarter. End over end kick, kind of angled for the sideline away from Lou now. And it'll roll dead at the 25 yard line, and that's where the Zebras will take over. First and 10 with a minute 24 to go here in the first quarter, not at six. Yep, that was a 35 yard punt and then very low. So, yeah. very, you know, very smart play there, just letting it roll out and not trying to return that. Zebra defense doing their job there on that second possession of yes. Wabash. Good adjustments made in the in game adjustments. Now we'll see what Rochester offense can do their second time around if Wabash defense makes any adjustments. Yeah, because we did a nice job there on that last drive of, of mixing it up. Who carried the ball? Swango up under center. Swango comes to Lunau to the near side. Lunau was on his way to a big run, but got tripped up, and he crosses the 30. It'll be a pickup of about six. It'll be second and four. Who is, I, I, who is 58 for us? 58 for us is Eli Swango. That's what I thought. He just... Buried somebody about 15 yards yeah. deep. <laughs> Eli getting a start tonight. Swango brings the play in from the sideline. 10 on the play clock. 49 seconds on the game clock. 6-6. Six, six, first quarter. Swango. Since Slosher in motion. The handoff comes to Lunau, who was in motion coming the other way. And... They're going to say loot ball, ball is down. down. And it should be a first down for Rochester. Nope. They're not giving it. The sticks are on the other side of the 35. The officials going now, to walk up and look at it. Nope. They're going to measure. Well, they can't now. They nope, there they now do. <laughs> A right slinking first down for the Zebras. With 15 seconds to go, Zebras will probably just opt to run the clock out and end the quarter tied at six. And that's what they're going to do. Yep. The end of one. We're knotted at six here at Barnhart Field. Zebras will have it first and 10 from their 35 when we come back. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM Sports, and RTC TV4. Back at Rochester High School, some scoring updates for you. It's Valley over Manchester, six to nothing. Pioneer strikes twice early in the first quarter. They're up 14 to nothing over the Pioneer Panthers. Or excuse me, Pioneer's up over Caston as the Pioneer Panthers strike early in the first quarter. Here at Rochester High School at the end of one, it's 6-6, and the Zebras are moving the football. They've got it first and 10 now on the 35. And again, like I said, that first quarter we did a nice job of, you know, we had three different people carry the ball and, and we're, we're mixing that up so now you can't really uh, uh, key on Alex from the 35 Swango brings the crew to the line up under center Swango to Lunau and flags come and late flags and we're going to have legal procedure against the Zebras that will come back So they'll go first and 15 from the 30 now. Yeah, I thought I saw somebody twitch, but I couldn't see if, if they were going to catch that or not. So Swango will bring in a new play from Coach Schaefer. You can see right now the uh, Wabash defense is you know, trying to load that box up, and, and, and we're cutting things back a little bit against the green. Swango to right back up the middle to Lunau. 
Yeah, he got the five yards back. <laughs> Get the five back. It'll be Dimming. second and ten. Is that Lunau or Dimming? Uh, Dimming. Or Dimming, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, Dimming. Lunau came the motion, man. Yeah. So Dimming picks up five more. It'll be second and ten back to the original line of scrimmage. Again, you know, as as we're watching this, we can kind of see our offensive line is really firing off and opening some holes, and, and we'll see if that helps us as the game goes on. Again, Lunau in the backfield. Goes in motion. Back to throw. Swango over the top. Complete to Slosher. Diving catch by Antonio Slosher. Picks up a three yards. It'll be a third and seven. Again, that just kind of just now that makes Wabash guy got to got to think that yeah. in, in in the back of their mind. So Swango got rid of it just in time as eighty seven was coming from the uh, yeah. from his backside and was ready to hit him. At the end of one, it's Peru seven, North Miami nothing. Swango, two fervent up, fervent up across First the down. 40, down near the 45, and that's going to be another Rice Lincoln first down. That was a nice job at fervent. He really took that ball and hit that hole really hard and quick and kind of gave it a little bit of a lunge there at the end to get the first down. We've seen Fervita do that. We saw him last year do that. You know, when he goes hard, and, and it's hard to stop. And we saw it with Southwood a couple of different carries he had, uh, how hard he hit the hole. And Fervita picked up the zebra first down. And it's first and 10 from the own for, their own 46. 10-20 to go here in the first half, tied at six. Swango sends McKee in motion. McKee gets the handoff. McKee around the left side. McKee still on his feet into Wabash territory. Finally going to be pushed out of bounds. At about the 36-yard line is where they're going to mark it. So about a 20-yard run. 20-yard run yeah. for McGee. And that was a nice job because that was he got that right in stride, and he was able to keep his speed as, as he ran that jet sweep there. Nice job by Gavin McKee. Pick up that big first down by Rice Lincoln. 250 North across from Walmart. Well, that makes our fourth different running um, back so far in this game. Messinas is split wide. The handoff goes back to Deming. Deming around on the left side, finds a hole. Deming still on his feet inside the 20. Going to be brought down at about the 15. Zebras are inside the red zone. And it's being brought to you by Farm Credit Mid-America, securing the future of rural communities and agriculture as well. 19-yard run there, that's, and, and that's what it does. When you run those other guys, and then you're yeah. going to have Alex go up the gut, and he hits that hard and quick, it, he's hard to stop. Deming just picked up his 100 yards, 5 for 100, according to Val. The handoff to Lunau. Lunau around the right side. Lunau still on his feet, going to be down about the 10. So that should be about a 6-yard pickup. Now give him five. It'll be second and five. Nine and a half to go here in the first half. Six six zebras and Apache's tied, but the zebras are knocking on the door. Samsel goes split to the far side. Deming behind Swango gets the ball. Deming around the left side. Touchdown zebras. Yep. 11 yard run. The 9 0 8 mark in the second quarter. Alec Dimming with an 11 yard run puts the Zebras on top. And they're going to go for two because of that missed first PAT. Not really a miss, it was a fumble snapped. Two point conversion on the way for the Zebras. Swango up under center. Swango gives it to Fervita. Fervita around the right side, and it is yeah. good. Two-point conversion is good. Zebras lead it 14-6. to six. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM Sports, and RTC TV4. Back with more after this. Field after the touchdown, the zebra scoring drive being brought to you by Rochester Ford. Nine plays, 75 yards. Alex Deming with a 11 yard run. Fervita, the two point conversion. Wallace kicking off this time for the zebras as uh, 
try to pin the Wabash Apaches deep, and it does go over the top of his head. It'll be picked up at the five. And then he's thrown out of bounds. Nice job by the kickoff team. Just coverage down there. Yeah, that was nice Daltry. Break. Not, not a real good choice. Yeah, that, that was a really nice kick. He put it down that corner, and, and we kind of crowd him around where he did, had no place to go. That was a really nice uh, kick there by Wallace. So the Zebra defense will come back on the field to see if they can stop the Apaches again. Yeah, you know they're, they're going to spread us out. They're going um, yeah. right, going to try to throw it. Looking, now he rolls to his left. It's going to be sacked. Another sack for the Zebra defense. That sack was number 58, Eli Swango. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 now for the Apaches. Great Great job by that front line. They're really penetrating hard and staying with their blocks. Yeah, and our defensive back and linebackers are doing a really good job in that zone defense. What we're doing is just kind of taking things away deep, which is really good and making them throw under us. Eight and a half to go here before halftime. 14-6, Zebra's on top. Out of the shotgun. The handoff goes to uh, Brooks, and Brooks is going to be dropped in the backfield. Was it McKee? Yeah. They're going to lose almost five. Looks like they get yeah, four. Four will be third and 14. Nice job by McKee again. Yeah, right now we're doing pretty good. You know, against their run, they've had three rushes for negative yards. And, and then they had two of them that got back to line of scrimmage. So they've had five of their rushes for, for negative yards or no gain. Big stop here for the Zebras. They can get their best field position possibly yet. And they roll to the left is right. Right looking, looking, throws it. It's going to be complete. Out to Grant. Grant will wiggle his way through and it'll end up getting a first down. He just kept yep. pursuing that to the left and that was obviously uh, Wright's good side. And uh, he makes the Completed pass out to Grant. We do have a zebra down. Looks like Swango. Eli Swango. Christina Hughes making her way across the field. The Wabash trainer quickly over there as well to help. Yeah. And right now, too, yeah, we have I have right unofficially seven for eight for 80 yards. 731 to go here in the first half. Zebras lead at 14 to 6. Gives me an opportunity to tell you about our fine sponsors of the Zebra football all season long. The Insulation Guys, your hometown certified insulation service provider. Rice Lincoln, 250 North across from Walmart. Rochester Ford, home of the lifetime oil change. Peterson, Wagner, and Perkins providing excellent legal services. And McDonald's, try DoorDash and get $5 off $15 for new customers with the code TRYMCD. Great sponsors supporting Zebras all season long. McConaughey defeating Whitco 20 to nothing at the end of the first. Again, we want to thank RTC partner Val for the scores. Right with the handoff right back up the middle, and it's going to go nowhere. Yep. Let's see who it was with the ball, and that was 34 learned. Learned goes nowhere, and it'll be second and ten. Yeah, that was their 11th rush of the game for four yards. <laughs> so our you know, our rush, I mean our our rushing defense is doing really good, and and really our defensive our backs are doing well too. They're keeping everybody in front of them, and right now they're just kind of throwing some dump passes in, in front of us, so which which is good. Under seven before halftime, Zebras lead again, 14 to six. Randy Wynn, Ray Davis, glad you could join us. They bring two out in the slots here on this time, two on the far side. Right out of the shotgun. Looking to throw a quick release. Throws over the top, and it's going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Daughtry. It was tipped in the air, and a couple of zebras were trying, and Swango and Fervita all right in there trying to get it. 
timeout, Rochester. Zebras want a timeout. We'll take one as well with 6.39 to go before halftime. They lead it 14-6 to here on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV. Back here at Barnhart Field. Got a few scoring updates for you. From Pioneer, it's 22-0 over Caston. McConaughey leading Whitco 20 to nothing. At last report, it was 7 0 North Miami losing to Peru. Tibina Valley over Manchester 6 0. It's Warsaw over Mishawaka 14 0. And Bremen over Triton 7 0 in the first quarter. After the Zebra timeouts, it'll be third and 10 now from the 21 yard line for the Wabash Apaches. They've got learned back in the backfield again. Right, look to throw. He tucks it, trying to uh, run it through, and he's going to be met by Mr. Marshall Fishback, and he's going to be taken down after about a four yards. Yeah, give him. I'm going to give him four yards. Four-yard pickup. It'll be fourth and six, and here comes the punting crew for Wabash, and Mr. Lunau will drop back to about his 40-yard line. It's going to kind of split the field this time because last time they kicked off, they kind of went to one side or the other. We'll wait and see what they do here. And DeBoard, high punt this time. Lunau will take it at the 48-yard line, and he'll fall across to about the other 48. So about a four-yard punt return. And the Zebras will take over first and 10 in Wabash territory. to go here before halftime. Coming up at halftime into the Dreddy's Place Halftime Show, we'll talk about scores, stats. We'll look at next week's game with Tibganu Valley and whatever else we can come up with. (laughs) All coming up at the Dreddy's Place Halftime Show in about 5 minutes and 54 seconds on the game clock. It would be huge here if we can get another score here before halftime because we get the ball to start the second. Swing go up under center. Slosher goes in motion, and he's tripped up. And that's where he'll go down. He'll lose yards. And I think I think he got tangled up with Swango's yes. feet when he was after he got by him. They're going to mark it back at about the 49. So that'll be about a three-yard loss. It'll be second and 13 now for the Zebras. I like the look. Unfortunately, yeah. just got tangled yeah. up there. I thought he had some running room. And it might have been because I don't know if our line got got a good push off to, yeah. to give him some spacing there or not. So, right back up the middle to Deming. Deming will get the three yard loss back. It'll be third and ten now to give him. Yep, three under five to go before half time. Randy Wynn, Ray Davis, glad you could join us on RTC TV 4 and Giant FM Sports. Swango out of under center. Wabash looking to blitz, and Coach Schaefer will use his second timeout. Kind of uh, going to try to counter what Wabash is doing there, as you saw a, a couple players really coming hard in the box on the defensive side. Yeah, I think they were trying to see if they can draw them off sides and get that extra five yards and make it a little bit more manageable, but Wabash was very disciplined there, and now now they've got to play here. you got to see something he gets 10 yards, and you know they're going to kind of make sure their linebackers are watching Deming, but, you know, if we can get outside, you know, we can get some yardage that way too, but then you also can't you can't forget, you, Wabash is probably coaches, probably also remind them, don't get stuck on that run. They might roll out and throw, you know, just throw about a five or six yard pass, and then and then and try and get the, the first down with our run, with our feet. Update score from Peru and North Miami now thirteen to nothing, Peru over North Miami. Four thirty six before halftime. The Zebras call the timeout. They'll have it third and ten from the Wabash forty eight. Wabash yet to call a timeout. They, no, they did no, call, call one. So they got yep. two left. Rochester has one. Swingo out of the huddle. Brings Samsel to the near side. Goes in motion. Now to Lunau. 
or excuse me, to Deming. Deming falls forward. He'll get about half of what we needed. Yeah. So it'll be fourth and five. And the Zebras look to go for it here at midfield. That just that shows the, the, the confidence in our line, but it also shows the confidence the coaching staff has in our defense right now. Yeah. Fourth and five. The scene is to the near side. Swango up under center. Swango to Fervida. Fervida around the right side. Fervida tripped up at the 40. And not going to be enough. They'll turn it over, and that's where Wallbash will take over first and 10 at the 40. Yeah, Coach Schaefer not happy there. I don't think somebody maybe blocked the right scheme or did something. Coach Schaefer not happy with that offensive uh, output. Yeah, it might have been. I'm not, I can't see from that angle. It might have been on that right side if it was the tight end or the tackle that didn't pinch down on that linebacker to, tell me to get, get that gap open. So Wabash will have it first and 10 with 3.58 to go here in the first half, trailing the Zebras 14-6. to six. Right out of the shotgun. He's got Dylan and Daughtry to the near side. Right unleashes it goes to the left side he's got a man open and it's complete to number 11 grant touchdown wabash 60 yard pass 60 yard pass 349 to go before halftime well that's how quick they can score and, and he he led that receiver really nice he did. on that pass And the receiver was able to just outrun the Zebra. They look to go for the two to try to tie it up, and they will not. Two-point conversion's no good. Good job by the Zebras to uh, not give in because they lined up like they were going to PAT it. Yep. 3.49 to go here before halftime. Now 14-12. to 12. Zebras lead it here on Giant FN Sports and RTC TV4. And the kick goes to Fervita. He'll take it at about the 15. Fervita at the 30. He'll dive forward. And they're going to mark him at the 30. And that's where the Zebras will have it first and 10 at their own 30. 3.45 to go here before halftime. Yep, that was, that, and Fervita did a nice job. And once he caught that, he just went straight up and he went hard and, and, and hit that hole really hard and quick. See what the Zebras can do this offensive possession as they start it at their own 30. Swango up under center, dimming behind him. The handoff goes to Fervita. Fervita around the right side. Fervita still on his feet. He's going to be brought down about the 35, and that's a five-yard pickup. It'll be second and five. I think that's what they wanted last play. That's what, yeah, <laughs> I think that's the call from the last play. They yep. needed that five yards. Yep. They probably talked about you know, the blocking scheme on this, and they wanted to see it right away so they could show it to them. Yeah. So. Second and five now for the Zebras. Swango to Deming. Deming, left side, finds a hole. Deming, first down, still on his feet, finally going to be brought down about the 45. Another Rice Lincoln, first down. Yep, 10-yard pickup. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Yeah, I have him officially with nine carries, 130 yards unofficially. More importantly, another first down. The handoff to Deming again. Deming around the right side, falls forward, gets into Wabash territory, going to be marked down about the 49. It'll be a six-yard pickup, second and four. He did, and he does a nice job there. He kind of he gets that hole, and if it's closed, he stutters a little bit and, yeah. and waits for something to open up, and then when he makes a decision, he just goes hard. up McKee, and Deming in the backfield. McKee goes in motion. He gets the handoff. Handoff, McKee on the, on the left side. McKee's got to go opening. McKee at the 20, 15, going to be knocked out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Great run for Gavin McKee. 
And he puts him inside the red zone and being brought to you by Farm Credit Mid-America. 41 yards. Great run. He, and again, one just like he did the last time. Yep. He was in stride, got the handoff, and just turned that corner. And Gavin wasn't being caught till late. First and goal from the 10. Swango to Deming. Deming. Runs everybody over into the end zone. Mm-hmm. Touchdown, Zebras. And like you said, he did. He just ran over about two or three uh, Wabash Apaches. Ten-yard run by Deming. And the Zebras will go for two, two. again. They will. Zebra's going to try for two. Swango to Fervita. Fervita cuts it back up the middle, and I'm waiting on a signal. No good. Nope. And two-point conversion, no good, with 2.06 to go here before halftime. Zebra strike again, 20-12. to 12. They take the lead here from Barnhart Field. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM Sports, and RTC TV4. Bye. Rochester Ford Lincoln, home of the lifetime oil change. Five plays, 70 yards for the Zebras. Alec Deming caps it off with a 10-yard touchdown run. The two-point conversion was no good. Let's see if, if uh, Parker Wallace can do what he did last time. You know, 55-yard kick that got down in, into that corner and, and kind of just really uh, re- received it and had much to do with after he caught it. So here's the kick from Wallace. We- Brought to you by Oil Change Express. A nice little kick over the top. Taken by number 85. And that is Sikafus. And he'll t- bring it back to near the 30-yard line. And that's where Wallbash will have it with just two minutes to go here in the first half. Yep, that was a- a- another really nice kick. Got down in that corner and kind of really... You know, kept him in that area where the the return guys can kind of uh, hold him in that area there. They mark it down at the 26-yard line, so that's where Walbash will take over a first and 10. Two minutes to go before halftime. Zebras lead 20 to 12. Right out of the shotgun again. Three spread to the right, two to the, or excuse me, to the left, two to the right. Right, throws out left, complete to Sikafus. Sikafus then is going to be tackled after about a six-yard pickup. It'll be second and si- uh, second and four. And you can see that they're going with nobody in the backfield. They're going t- quick two-minute t- two drill here. Yep. Trying to catch the Zebras off guard. High snap, now taken by Wright, thrown out there, almost in- intercepted. The pass goes through two hands and right into Daltrey's, and Daltrey makes the catch. It'll be a Rice-Lincoln first down. Yeah. Went through one Wabash hand, one Rochester hand, into Daltrey's. Right again, out of the shotgun. Right looking to his left, throws complete. Out there to, looks like, Sekafus again, and he's going to be brought down midfield at the 50. About two yards shy. It'll be an eight-yard pickup, second and two. Yeah, and, and, and from here, you could, it, it sounded like the coaches were telling him to get out of bounds. Actually, they're going to mark him down at the 49, so just give him a seven-yard throw. It'll be a second and three. Clock continues to roll with 120. Well, I guess they did stop it. 120. Now it goes with the snap, right? Flushed out of the pocket. He's going to throw over the middle, and it's going to be incomplete, but a penalty flag is laying in the middle of the field, and the press box says holding. (laughs) Holding. I think there's some guys that used to play up here, so they they might know. Yeah. And it is holding on the Apaches. And they wouldn't know what holding was when they played. They wouldn't? No. They did it all the time? Yeah. (laughs) So they'll march that back, and they'll have second down over again. But this time it'll be second and about 15. There's a spot of the foul. So 
about 15, 16 yards to go for the Apaches. Ball sitting at the 36. 1.14 to go before halftime. Again, Zebras will have the ball to start the third quarter. Right, out of the shotgun. Quick release, and it's going to be incomplete. Sikafus, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third and 15. Yep, and same thing. It kind of went through Wabash's guy's hands, and it went right by our shoulder, and we couldn't react quick enough. So the clock stops with 1.10 to go here before halftime. Again, coming up at halftime, the Dreddy's Place Halftime Show. We'll recap some scores from around the area. We'll talk about the first half. We'll have stats and go over the scoring drives for you. There's been a lot of them. Right with the handoff to learn, and he goes nowhere. And that'll be a fourth down and about 15 for Wabash. As Learn got to the line of scrimmage yep. and was stuffed. And they're probably just going to let the clock run. Not to run it and then take the timeout because there'll be 45 yeah. on the. It's about 20 seconds difference, give or take, depending on the uh, clock guys over here. <laughs> Never know. Pioneer now 30 to nothing over Caston. Yep. Wallback just took a timeout. The timeout by the Apaches. 26.7 seconds to go. We'll keep it here and tell you about our fine sponsors. Jennings Insurance in Argus and in Rochester. They're going beyond the expected for you. Fulton County Solid Waste District. Don't trash our future. Please recycle. Steve Moore Insurance. Small town, big service. Heisman for Sheriff, Community, Integrity, Commitment, and Dreddy's Place, home of the other side grill, and the Arlington Banquet Room, all proud supporters of Zebra football all season long. Randy Wynn, Ray Davis, 20 to 12. Zebras have it, the lead, and are about to get the ball back. And they're gonna, and it looks like they're going to punt. I would doubt that we'd fake. Northfield Southwood tied at seven. They are going to punt it away. Well, at least appear to be, like you yeah. said. And that will be the board. Yeah. And nobody's back deep. Zebra's playing it safe on the defense. There's the kick. Goes to the sideline and checks up in favor of the Zebras. And they'll have it first in 10 from the 49-yard line of the Zebras with just 19 seconds to go before halftime. Just a 15-yarder. No return. See what the Zebras opt to do here. Coach Schaefer gets the ball back to start the third quarter. He could spring Deming or Lunau or yeah. Furva to loose here. Watch for our counter play, too. Swango up under center. Deming right back up the middle. Deming. Down to the 45. They were asked, the officials asked, the coaching staff asked the official about a face mask. Yeah. He said no, and the Zebras will just let the clock run out. And that'll do it. At halftime, your Zebras lead it 20 to 12. Here at halftime, when we come back, the Dreddies plays halftime show. Again, halftime, Zebras lead 20 to 12. You're listening to Zebra Football. Giant FM Sports and RTC TV 4. Show being brought to you by Dreddy's Place. Home of the other side grill in the Arlington Banquet Room. Check out their team meals, to-go box lunches, and the full coffee bar. That's Dreddy's Place in downtown Rochester. Well, before we get to the stats, let's go over the scoring and how we got to 20 to 12. It all started in the first quarter with 5.36 to go in the first possession for the, uh, uh, excuse me, for the Wabash Apaches as they take the ball and go uh, 61 yards on 12 plays from right to Dillon on the 10-yard pass. The PAT was blocked, and it was 6 nothing. At 3.06 to go in the second or first quarter, Zebras strike first in their first possession. 
And a 61-yard run by Alec Deming. They went five plays, 80 yards. The PAT was no good. We were tied at six all. 9.08 to go in the second quarter. On the 11-yard run by Deming, the Zebras take the lead. The two-point conversion was good by Fervita. The Zebras went nine plays, 75 yards for a 14-6 lead. 3.49 to go in the second quarter. It was a 60-yard pass from Wright to Grant. One play, 60 yards for the Apaches. The two-point conversion was no good, 14-12. to 12. And then with two minutes and six seconds to go before halftime, Alec Deming broke free again for a 10-yard run. The two-point conversion was no good. The Zebras go five plays, 70 yards for the touchdown, and that's how we get to 20-12. to 12. Well, you know, we said Alec Deming has three touchdowns, but it's not been the Alec Deming show just himself. The Zebras are doing a nice job of mixing other guys into it. Ray, you'll talk about that in the stats. Yeah, and and we'll take a look at Wabash first. Right now what they're doing is they've had 13 carries for 10 yards. Um, Their leading leading rusher is actually Colton Learn, who has six carries for 12 yards. Um, passing wise is where they've been very productive tonight Um, right right now he's 11 for 14 for 68 yards and two touchdowns the PATs is where actually both teams have actually kind of struggled tonight you know they have you know they they missed their first where they got a uh, got it blocked and then they went for two point version didn't convert that Um, they do have two penalties for 25 yards um, the Zebras right now, they have 23 carries for 239 yards unofficially. Um, I have Alex Deming. Um, he has 12 carries for about 150 yards. And then, again, you got two, you got three, three other guys who carried the ball tonight. You've got uh, McKee. I have him unofficially with two carries for 61 yards. And then I, I have uh, Lunau and Fervita both have 17-yard carries, so total yards there. So we got, you know, four different guys that's setting things up. And... If you actually look at, we're one for one passing for three yards, um, and we also same thing. PATs, we we, we kind of bobbled the first one, then went for two. Um, actually scored scored on the second one, and then the the third one that we went for two again and did not um, score on that one. And then we have two penalties for ten yards. So, and neither team has, has given the ball away. No one's fumbled the ball. No one's right. doing an interception. Now, there's been a couple interception possibilities that, for us, but neither team has given the ball away, so they, they've taken care of that way, and the defense has stepped up for both teams really when they needed. 20 to 12 is where we're at, and really, as far as penalty-wise, it's been a pretty clean game as well. It has been. Uh, both teams, we, we've had a, a holding. We had an offsides. Um, then we had the... Um, I try to think a couple other ones. I think may have just been legal procedure. So nothing really um, big there on that on, on that side, which is kind of good. Coaches like to see that when you're getting into your fourth game of the season and you're cutting down on that. Um, so we had, the second half is is it, it's going to be really interesting to see because we've done some really good jobs, um, especially the past two games of making our adjustments at halftime and come out and being able to e- execute those. So we'll see if we can kind of continue that. Again, we're at halftime, twenty to twelve. Well, let's talk about it. It's the game that everybody's kind of been looking at for quite a while, especially if you're a Rochester fan, you're a Valley Viking fan. Next Friday night back here at Barnhart Field, it's the Zebras and the Vikings. At last report, it was Timmy Valley leading Manchester 6-0. That was early in the in the first quarter. I haven't had any, any updates lately on that one, but the, if Valley holds and wins that one, Zebras hold and win this one, that just really is adding to what should be a great rivalry game anyways. It is. You know, that with the communities being as, as close as they are and you're playing for the bell and, and everything along that line and over the years that they've, they've had this, um, this football game, is, it's really gotten a, a, a big rivalry, especially here in the past, I would say, 15, 20 years. It's really been a good rivalry. Um, and, it's been, and it's just something that the kids look forward to. They circle that date. You know, when, the, when the schedule comes out, whenever it does, you know, the, the first thing they're looking for is, where's the Valley game at? You know, where's the date at? And, and they're, letting, they're letting family know, hey, we're playing Valley on this date. Can you come into town that night if, if you happen to be out of town? College kids, they're looking at their schedule. Can, can I come home that weekend? So you know, it, it's just that it's, it's that big rivalry game, and, and and but like like we said, both teams, coaching staff do a really good job of having their kids prepared of concentrating on this week's games, then worry about that game. Well, with next week's game, don't forget beforehand, uh, 
a benefit dinner for uh, a great coach, Coach Ken Hughes. It will be at the high school football field and practice football field from 4 to 7. There will be Perkins pulled pork sandwiches, chips, cookies, and drinks for $8. drive through carry out available. Again, it's 4 to 7 prior to next week's football game. Uh, so come on out and, and drive through, get it, go sit in the parking lot, do a little tailgating, and get ready for the big game. And, uh, uh, again, benefit Coach Hughes as yep. he's encountered some uh, medical issues throughout the summer and, and some bills. And they're just uh, the First Christian Church wanting to put this on to uh, help support Coach Hughes. So uh, come on out tomorrow yes. or next Friday night. Next Friday. Drive on through and get ready to celebrate the uh, big Friday night game. It will be, and, and you know, and both teams and, and both communities will really look forward to this game. And, and they and, and over the years. They have they have supported each other with with with, with right. things like this. Yeah. So it, it, it's a it's a good rivalry, but there's a lot of respect between the two communities and the two football programs. And I believe, if I'm correct, Val might even know more. I believe Shrive Fest is tomorrow. Yes, 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 it is. Yes. Shrive Fest out at the uh, at Blueberry Farm. So yeah. Great, uh, great thing there too to benefit uh, Jeff Shriver and his memorial fund uh, at Tibino Valley. So if you've got an opportunity to go there tomorrow, look it up. It's on Facebook. Try Fest. They've got bands. They've got live music, food. It's so if you have that opportunity, go out and support Try Fest next Friday night. Come support Zebra Coach Ken Hughes and and enjoy a great Valley Rochester football game. We'll talk more about scores from around the area when we come back. You're listening to Zebra Football, where the Zebras lead it 20-12 to 12 at halftime. 92.1 WROI and RTC TV4.
Zebras will have it to start the second half, and we'll do that when we come back. You're listening to Zebra Football at halftime. They lead 20-12. to 12. Giant FM Sports and RTZ TV. What's the mic in the key? in banquet room check out team meals to go box lunches and a full coffee bar that's dreddy's place in downtown rochester well we get ready to start the second half and the zebras again will have the football to start back deep will be fervida and messinas Kicking off will be number 74. That's DeBoard for the Apaches. Yep, and then you got to step back a little bit farther, I would think, because you got the wind behind you a little bit. It kind of died down as you look at the flag out there. But we'll see what DeBoard does. Gets the long run. End over end kick going to be taken by Messinas. Messinas at the 20. Messinas back to the 30. Crosses the 35. Going to be brought down about the 37 yard line. Nice 17 nice. yard yep. return. Very nice return there. Got things started for the Zebras. Here, uh, first and 10 to start the third quarter from their own 37 yard line. Well, we can control the line. That's probably the big thing we talked about about halftime, about just keep our blocks and, and sustain our blocks so maybe a little bit more longer. Swango up under center. The handoff comes to Deming. Deming kicks it outside. Deming lowers his head, and he'll fall forward to about the 45. He'll pick up seven. It'll be second down and three. And see, that's the one thing that, that is a little bit different. There in the first half, we always had someone in motion. Yeah. That time there, we didn't have anybody in motion, and, and we just got a, a, like a quick quick snap there and then hand it off to Deming. Again, 20 to 12, Zebras lead, first possession of the second half. Swango under center. Sand Slosher in motion this time. He gets the handoff around the left side, cuts it back up, has a hole. Tries to dive forward. And it's going to be near the first down marker. We'll wait and see what the official spot is. And they yep. do. Another Rice Lincoln first down. And that's Rice Lincoln of Warsaw, 250 north across from Walmart. And now it's Foster's first carry of the night. So now we've got five guys. Second carry? Yeah. That's what Val says. Okay. You know, we're totally unofficial. That's right. <laughs> Val is way more official than we are. Handoff comes to Deming on the near side. Deming crosses midfield. Deming's still on his feet. He's going to be brought down near the 48. For Deming, a five-yard pickup. It'll be second and five from the Apache 48. Okay, you, again, we're, we're, what we're doing, we're mixing it up yeah. with our running backs, and, and you got to and trying to keep the linebackers for uh, – Wabash to try and stay home. Maybe we can break something outside here again. And a flag come and illegal procedure against the Zebras. It'll be back to second and ten. And I think they could have probably picked two people. I think our our wing back was in a little bit, and yeah. I think our the guy our guard who was pulling kind of left a little bit early too. So it's back to second and ten now for the Zebras after the five yard penalty. Ten twenty five to go here in the third. 20 to 12. Ray Davis, Randy Wynn, glad you could join us. Barnhart Field. 
Been a good football game so far. Pretty quick. Not many flags. The handoff to Deming. He's finally going to be hit in the backfield. That's the first time they've made that happen, and Deming loses about five. It'll be third and 15. Yeah. And actually, I th well, they're only going to move him back up. They're going to give him forward progress. He only loses about two, so it'll be third and 12. And I have, I'd, I'd have to go back and look. That might be his first negative ca yards <laughs> carry this year. You may be right. Don't remember many of them. Swango again, up under center, third and long for the Zebras. The handoff to Deming. He goes right back up the middle and a 48. And the punt team will come out and they'll punt it away. First possession, and the Zebras will punt it away here of the third quarter. Colton Fervita back to do the punting. The deep man will be number 11, and that is Grant for Wallbash. Fervita, low line drive, takes a nice hop. Grant picks it up at the 14. Grant going the wrong direction. Finally going to be maybe brought down, and he is about the 14. Gets back to where he picked it up, and that's where Wabash will take over first and 10 from their own 14-yard line. 36-yard punt for him. Got a good bounce there. Yeah, Fervent doesn't get a high punt. No. It's a, it's a nice line drive. Takes the uh, end over end, which is really surprised why Grant took it. Yeah. I mean, it he ended up having to back up a little bit. And he's lucky he got back to the line of scrimmage or where he took it. Under nine to go here in the third. Right out of the shotgun. Right. Quick pass over the top, and that is fumble. Ball's loose, picked up by the Zebras. Oh, now they're going to say incomplete pass. Yep. Say he didn't take a football move, make a football move. The intended receiver was Rice. And then the Zebras just couldn't quite get on it either. So it's going to be incomplete. It'll be second and ten. And it was like he, he kind of he, he put that in learns learned uh, gut and pulled it, and yeah. we kind of stepped up, and that's what opened up the back side of our linebackers. Grant to the near side, right out of the shotgun, learns next to him. Looks to his left. Now he'll throw it up over the middle. It's incomplete. Yep, that one skipped skips in. in. Yeah. Skipping rocks, that was a good throw. And that was a good job of our linebackers getting back and taking away yeah. those angles so that he it was kind of hard to see his, his, his uh, receiver cutting across the middle. Third and 10, 8.50. Clock stops on the incomplete pass. Zebra still lead 20 to 12. Val just pointed out double teaming the nose tackle in Shriver. High snap for Wright. Wright rolls out to his right, throws it, and it's going to be complete. And he goes out of bounds. We'll see where it goes. It's the Daughtry was the first down. Oh, first down. They gave it right at the marker. Uh, Rice Lincoln first down for Wabash. He steps out of bounds. The clock will stop. Right on the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Apaches. Again, they, they rolled him out and gave him some angles where he could see things, and also if he needed to, he could, he could tuck it and go. Learned to right, left. And procedure against Wabash this time. It'll be second, or excuse me, first and 15. Yeah. Brooks was, Brooks was over here going, was that on me or was that on you? He's pointing to his teammate. Yeah. Which one? We both did, I think. Which one got caught? <laughs> so 8.43 to go here in the third. Ray Davis, Randy Wynn, glad you could join us. Brooks and Grant come to the near side. Right. Looks. Left. Now he'll tuck it and he throws it to Grant. Grant on the horse up the middle. Grant, one man to beat, and he does. And Grant's going to go to the end zone. Touchdown, Wabash. The ball was on the 25-yard line. 20, 25. 25, wasn't it? 
On the 20. On the 20. Yeah. 80-yard touchdown pass. But there is a flag right down here, though. I just now see it. There's a flag down here. That might be coming back. Nobody saw the coaching staff didn't even see it. They just see it. The flag is thrown at the 25. Now the officials will discuss it. And the official call is waving it off. Touchdown stands. 8.28 to go in the third. An 80-yard pass from right to Grant. To Grant. Well, Grant has four catches for 169 yards. And they will go for the PAT. And that is DeBoard, which kind of surprises me if ever they'd go to tie it up. But they're going to – they're lining up to go for the PAT anyways. And we blocked his last attempt. Yes. Snap is down and kick is up, and it is good. So with the extra point, good, and a touchdown. It is now 20-19. to Zebras lead 8.28 to go here in the third. You're listening to the Giant FM Sports and RTC TV 4. Here at Barnhart Field, the Apaches score on four plays, 85 yards on an 80-yard touchdown pass. From right to Grant, the PAT was good, and it's a one-point game now, 20-19 to 19 on the Inyards True Value scoreboard. That scoring drive being brought to you by Rochester Ford, home of the lifetime oil change. Zebras will get the kickoff, being brought to you by Oil Change Express. Eight twenty-eight to go here in the third. End over end kick going to be taken by Fervita at the 15. He fumbles it, picks it back up, trying to break free, crosses the 20, and going to get back to about the 24 before he can get tackled, and that's where the Zebras will take over. Luckily, he was able to go back and get it. Yep, and, and a lot of times when that happens, the defense, the, rece- the defense of the tackling team is kind of relaxed a little bit. Sometimes you'll get some big breaks there, but that, we, we, it was still good to get back nine yards of that. So the Zebras will have it first and 10. From their own 24 to start this possession, their second possession of the third quarter. 20 to 19 on the Inyards True Value scoreboard. And you wonder what the conditioning is for Wabash. Yeah. Not having a game last week. Schlosser goes in motion. The handoff to Deming around the left side. Deming still on his feet, pushing forward. Going to be brought down near the 30. Should be a... Yep, they're going to mark it at nine. the 30, so a so nine yard, yeah, nine yard oh, no, the, the, no, there the we down go. marker is That's going say. crazy over there. Should be about a six, six yard, yard pickup, second and four. This Ball sitting on the yeah. 30. This is where our offensive line just has to take control of this game. Slosher again in motion. Deming right back up the gut, and he'll cross over to about the 37. Should be enough for a Rice Lincoln first down. Yeah, I have us unofficially for our, that was our ninth for the game. Regan will come into the contest for Samsel for the Zebra offense, the tight end slot. This is where you know, like, like, like you know, we, we give it to Alex, and then we, we, once in a while here, we're going to break one outside here. Lunau goes in motion, the handoff to Deming again around the right side. He'll gain short gain of two. He'll be second and about eight for the Zebras. Clock continues to roll, 7.05 here to go in the third quarter. Yeah, I have him unofficially for 19 carries for 172 yards. Coach's corner coming your way tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. We should be back to full staff on coaches' shows. <laughs> Casting back. Culver will be back. 
The handoff goes to McKee. McKee around the left side. McKee's going to be dropped for a loss. Tried to kick that thing outside left and just couldn't get anywhere. He'll lose three yards, I think. Three or four yards. It'll be third and 11. That's one thing that Coach Schaefer talked about is being behind the sticks, and they found themselves that way a couple times yeah, tonight. They have. And the one thing we, you know, I think the one thing we're setting up here when we do that jet sweep is we're going to be able to, I think, fake that and then come back with a counter because right now Wabash is just selling out going with, with that jet sweep. The handoff to Deming going right back up the middle. He breaks free. Going to be close to the first down. It's going to be right at the 45 and should be about a half a yard short. It'll be fourth and less than one for the Zebras. Zebras will go for it. 540 to go here in the third. 20 to 19 on the Inyards True Value scoreboard. Fourth and one from the 46. Mancinas comes to the near side. Fervent, it goes in motion. The handoff to Deming. And he's got it and more. Yeah, he did a nice job of just, you know, finding that hole and then just uh, squaring his shoulders up. Another Rice Lincoln first down for the Zebras. The best part about that, the clock continues to roll. It's all about clock management right now. You still have that lead. You're moving the football, get the first downs, keep the clock running. Out of further in motion. They give it to Deming again. Deming crosses midfield. Going to be brought down about the 45 of the Wabash Apaches. Give him seven. It'll be second down and three. And the one thing I like when you watch Fervita, even though when he's in motion, he's not getting the ball, he's running at the same speed even if you don't know if he's getting or not getting it. Right. And that's what young players need to realize. you still got to carry out your – your job and your responsibilities, even though you're not getting the ball. Swango up under center. Seeing Slosher in motion this time. The counter. There's the counter. Loon out. Loon out the middle. Loon out. Going to break free. One man to beat. 5 10. Touchdown, Zebras. 45 yard touchdown run for Peyton Loon out. That, yep, that was what you were talking just, about yep, earlier. Yep, the counter. We did a nice job. We just kind of went the way. Everybody was going one direction. We yeah. brought Lunau back. Lunau with the big run. The Zebras will try to go for two here and get it back to uh, 28. 26-19 right now. Swango up under center. To Fervida. Fervida. Dives in, two-point conversion's good. So it's now back to 28-19. Zebra lead with 4.19 to go here in the third. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM Sports, and RTC TV4. It's capped off by the 45-yard touchdown run by Peyton Lunell. Fervida with the two-point conversion. And it's now 28-19 on your Inyards True Value scoreboard. And I have us right now unofficially 332 yards on, 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 on rushing. Peru leads North Miami 19 to nothing. Schaefer to kick off this time. Goes right to the 35-yard line, and that's where 87 Price will just take a knee. It'll be first and 10 for the Apaches. 28-19 on the air. It's true value scoreboard. Zebras lead it. Yeah, it kind of caught Price off guard. Price yeah. was like, wait a minute. I mean, he, like he, he wasn't sure what, what, what he should have done with it. It's where our defense really has to buckle down because you know we're gonna, they're going to pass the ball. Right. They're, they're going to throw some runs in just to kind of try and keep us honest, but they're going to mainly uh, throw the ball here. Right will come out of the shotgun. He sends Brooks and Dartry to the far side. Grant to the near side. Learned next to right. 
Ball's loose, picked up by Wright, and he'll just fall down, and it'll be a loss. Another sack for the Zebras. Don't forget, that's about the third or fourth sack, so you can go tomorrow to McDonald's with your game ticket or program, or go online and screenshot later tonight on our WROI Facebook page, the Big Mac Sack Attack, and go to the Rochester McDonald's and buy one Big Mac, get a second one free. Thanks to McDonald's in Rochester. Gotta love your Big Mac. Yep. 340 to go here in the third. Right out of the shotgun. High snap again, but he handles this one. Looking, looking, it collapses, and he's going to finally be brought down about at the 35. He'll pick up a couple of the yards back that he lost. He's still going to be third and long, about 12th for the Apaches. 3.15 to go here in the third. They, they ran the ball 15 times for a total of 10 yards, but they have 268 yards passing. <laughs> Total opposite of what we've got. We go, we'll flip-flop them. Right again out of the shotgun. Daughtry and Brooks to the far side. Now Grant will go that side as well. Trips to the far side. Timeouts. Wabash as Coach Staff not very happy. No. We'll take one as well. 2.53 to go on the in True Value scoreboard. Zebras 28, Wabash 19. Giant FM Sports and RTC TV 4. They'll have a third and 12. Scoring update, Northfield now 13, Southwood 7 in a TRC matchup. Pioneer is now 42 to nothing over the casting Comets. Tipton defeating Lewis Cass 35 to nothing. Cass a sectional opponent of the Zebras. Right out of the shotgun. Rolls to his right, looking, looking, a flag coming, and the pass is complete to Daughtry, but I believe it's coming back. Yep, holding, I believe. Going to march her back as the official threw it in the backfield. Holding yep. against Wabash. So it will be third, and they're going to mark the hold at the 30. Three, so 10-yard penalty from there. Should put it back at the 23. Well, we still have, you know, even with third down here, our, yeah. our, our safeties have got to keep people in front. Uh, and the big thing that they've shown is he scrambles. That opens some things up, so we've got to stay home and stay, and, and stay with our reads. Third and 24. As they spread everybody out, right out of the shotgun. Rolls to the near side, looking, looking, looking. Sets his feet, throws it deep. He's got a man open, and it's incomplete, and a great job by Slosher to knock it out. Dylan had that in his hands. <laughs> And Slosher reaches over the top, oh. tips it out. Great defensive play by Slosher. That was because he, he was beat, and but he recovered very quickly. And then what we do as a team was the back, he's reading his eyes. When he saw his eyes goes up, his hand went up to try to get that ball knocked out of there. Wallbash going for it, a fourth down. Oh, only third down. That was second. Okay. Okay, my apologies. I thought that was third. Is it fourth? They have it as third. The near side to Grant. Grant has it, and he's going to be tackled at about the 27-yard line. And it is. Turnover on downs. Grant is coming up gimping. But Lunau's going back. To receive the punt, so it's now fourth down. <laughs> Somehow they, yeah, the penalty went back to. <laughs> fifth down, and they're going to punt it. 
<laughs> <laughs> As the training, both trainers out on the field for Wabash and Rochester. Val says it's fifth and 19 or 20 for Wabash now. Anyway, he'll be back to punt. Will be the board and Lunau back to receive. Yep, this would be his fourth punt of the game. Two minutes, 22 seconds remain in the third quarter. On the Inyards True Value scoreboard, it's 28-19. Zebras lead the Apaches. And his last punt was only 16 yards. Lou now standing at about his 20, or 30, 34, 35, yeah, 34, 35. End over end kick going to go towards the Wabash sideline. It hits at about the 45, and it will roll out of bounds about the 40, and that's where the Zebras will take over first and 10. But 2.06 to go on the Inyards True Value scoreboard. Zebras still leading 28-19. Randy Wynn, Ray Davis, glad you could join us here tonight. Don't forget, Coach's Corner coming your way tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock here on Giant FM. We'll have Zebra head coach Ron Schaefer, call for Cavalier head coach Mike Zayner, Will Porter, the casting comments. And, well, I guess we won't be the full staff. John Hendricks of the Winnemac Warriors, they didn't oh, play right. tonight. So we'll be three quarters tomorrow morning. <laughs> Two oh six to go in the third. Zebras have it. Swain go up under center. Right back up to Deming. Deming across is the 45. Going to be brought down. Well, they're going to give it to 45. It'll be a five-yard pickup, second and five now for the Zebras. And, and, again, our offensive line, I know I keep talking about this, they are firing off the ball, and they're pushing Wabash back two or three yards uh, for us to be able to get, to, get that. 20 to nothing now. Peru over North Miami. Well, I think it's more than that. My wife told me it was 19 a little bit ago. They don't get one point. <laughs> the handoff is to Deming again. He comes to the near side. Deming. Deming. Gonna be pick up a yeah. couple. He's gonna be a couple short of being up third and manageable for the Zebras. Yeah. I have him unofficially now over 200 yards on 24 carries. Yeah, people don't realize, you know, against Whitco, he had like, what, 240 yards? Something like that, yeah. And didn't carry the ball the fourth quarter. <laughs> Under a minute to go here in the third. Still 28-19 on the Ingers True Value scoreboard. Third and short for the Zebras. Lou now comes in motion. Hand off to Deming. Deming across midfield. First down. For Rice Lincoln first down. Into Wabash territory. Yeah, that gives us um, unofficially our 11th first down. And you can see, like you can see right now, right now we're we're really dominating this offensive line tonight. Um, just pushing Wabash back two or three yards, and when you got Dimming and Fervita and our other running backs hitting that hole at full speed, we're getting that four or five yards a carry. Under center is Swango. McKee goes in motion. He gets the ball flag from the far side. And D McKee's going to be dropped back at the 40, but a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. I think legal procedure. They might decline this. And it is. They declined it. Yep, they'll decline it, and the Zebras will be back to the 41-yard line. Was that Lunau or Slosher? That was McKee. That was McKee. McKee. I, lo I looked down and lost track. and So it'll be second down and about 18 or so to start the fourth quarter. For the Zebras, at the end of three on the Enyards True Value scoreboard, 28-19, Zebras lead it. Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. To uh, start the fourth and final quarter, Zebras lead it on the Enyards True Value scoreboard, 28-19. Some scores from around the area. It's Bremen over Triton, 28-7. 
It is Peru 20 over North Miami 0. Tibby Valley 28 nothing over Manchester. McConaughey 40 to nothing over Whitco. Pioneer 42 cast in 6. Starting in the fourth quarter, Zebra football. Second and 21 to Fervida. Fervida breaks a couple tackles. Fervida, a little bit of nothing into the first down and more. Still on his feet across the 30, going to be brought down near the 25-yard line. And what looked like it was going to go for nothing ends up going huge. And, and it, it was that counter play again. We, we, we brought him back against the grain because Wabash has been over-pursuing on that. So Great run by Fervida. On the, what, he's on the 22? 22 is where he's at. He was at the 41. 41, so. 37? 37. Man. Big run for Fervida. First and 10, the Rice Lincoln first down. Goes to Deming. Deming around the left side. Deming off that right or left side is just plowing forward. Still on his feet. He's near the first down marker. We'll wait and see where they spot it. If they gave him nine. They undo the pile and looks like Deming might have a cramp. Yep, that's all. Yeah. He jumps up, stretches it out. Nice sportsmanship, too. You see Wabash guy was trying Wabash to help him. Wabash was helping him, too. <laughs> so he'll have to come out for a play. And you bring in a second and short. Nine-yard pickup for Deming. And you bring in a fresh Meadows. Yeah. <laughs> Clock continues to roll. Down to 11 minutes in the contest. 28-19. Zebras lead on the Inner's True Value scoreboard. Meadows behind Swango. And it goes to Schlosser. Slosher is met at the line. He might got a half a yard. It's going to bring up third down and short for the Zebras. Yep, just about a half short, half a yard. Clock continues to roll. Rainy Wynn, Ray Davis, glad you could join us here tonight on Giant FM and RTC TV4. We're back at Barnhart Field next Friday night for the Bell game against the Tipping New Valley Vikings. Who at last report were leading 28 to nothing over the Squires, who everybody thought that would be a close contest. The handoff to Meadows. Meadows around the left side. Meadows inside the red zone, being brought to you by Farm Credit Mid America. And another first down brought to you by Rice Lincoln. 250 North in Warsaw across from Walmart. Yeah, nice job there by Wesley Mellows just holding the ball, not, not, not fumbling and, and getting the yards and, and having his shoulder square to the line when he hit that. First and goal for the Zebras. Swango up under center to Lunau, or excuse me, to Meadows again. Meadows around the left side. Meadows down near the goal line, going to be about a yard short. It's going to be second and goal from the one. Zebra's knocking on the door again. It's going to be a little tougher this week to pick the Rochester Glass player of the game because there is a lot of contribution going around tonight. There has been a lot tonight. Deming back in. Fervita goes in motion. They hand off to Deming. Touchdown, Zebras. 9.05 9.05 in the fourth. A one-yard run for Deming. Zebras will look like they're going to line up for two, two again. Yep. And so far, every time we've gone for two, the ball has been in Fervid's hands. hands. yeah. 
Pretty much the same play, I think. Yeah, pretty much just kind of let him <laughs> just decide cut, if he yeah. wants to cut it back up or, or go he out kind of goes outside. In, kind of goes in motion. We'll wait and see what he does this time. Swango up under center. Nope, this time Deming gets it. Two-point conversion, good. Deming the ball carrier on the two-point conversion. Just like that with 9.05 to go here in the fourth. On the Indian True Value scoreboard, 36-19, Zebras lead it. Back with more after this. Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Back here at Barnhart Field after the touchdown. Scoring drive by Rochester Ford goes 10 plays, 60 yards. Dimming one yard run, dimming the two point conversion. This kickoff being brought to you by Oil Change Express. And that one was by Wallace, and it checks up at about the 18. And they're going to break one free, it does. Daughtry, but he's finally going to be brought down at midfield. Nice open field tackle. Parker Wallace with the saving touchdown tackle. He kicked it off, and he made the stop. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, little breakdown, I think, in the backfield there, or back down. I'm trying to think of the uh, McKee, the Colts McKee. kicker, the oh. retired kicker. Yeah. He had been proud of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, McAfee. McAfee. Yeah, there we go. I, I, I kind of knew it wasn't McKee, but. Right to throw, and it goes out to Brooks. Brooks is going to be short of the first down marker. It'll be second and about two for the Apaches. As they're kind of uh, going into the hurry up offense with 8.40 to go here in the fourth. Second and two, right out of the shotgun. Looks to throw, quick release. Goes left, open to, uh, that was out to the flat to Sikafus, and he looked to the end zone before he caught it, incomplete. Yep, he he knew he was open, and he turned before he had the ball, and, and, and you got to watch that ball all the way in. Clock stops at 8.32. Third and two now for the Apaches. They spread everybody out. Three to the top, two to the bottom. Right looks to throw, comes to the near side. Incomplete. It's going to be fourth and two. Yeah, kind of surprised they threw it there. I mean, you could, you could you know, bring Learn in there, maybe get that, that first down, but... Now they'll bring Learn in. Yep. Learned will be next to right. Out of the shotgun. Twins each way. They go to Learn. Learn. No. He's going to be short. Turnover on downs. He yep. had to get to the 40, and the mark is shy of the 40. That's a turnover on downs. Great job by the Zebra defense. Yeah, really good job there of, of wrapping him up there in, in the backfield and not letting him uh, get across that line. That comes back to our defensive line of uh, exploding across there and kind of bunch that up. Kind of goes back to what you were saying on that. I'm not sure why they didn't run that play right. on third down, and then it leaves you just a little bit on fourth. Right. Okay. And then that, okay. great job by the D. Z yeah, D. it is. And because now on the fourth down, if you had done that the third, now you got the defense guessing. What are you going to do? Are you going to pass it or run it? But – Zebras have an opportunity to run some clock here and put this one away with 8.20 to go here in the fourth, leading 36-19 on the Inert's True Value scoreboard. Swango up under center. Schlosser goes in motion. He has the handoff. Schlosser turns it up, crosses the 40. Going to be brought down finally about midfield near the 45. Or excuse me, near midfield near the 50. He's going to be about short a yard. Because he needs to get to the 49 of Wabash. So it's going to be second and one. But good job there by the um, our, our running backs blocking. Because when we came this way, the, he was being led by two of our running backs. Swango up under center. 
to Lunau. Lunau turns it up the right side. Lunau still on his feet. Lunau down near the 35. Another Rice Lincoln first down for the Zebras. Yeah, Becky picked up 16 yards there. Big run for Lunau. To have him unofficially seven carries for 78 yards. Clock continues to roll under seven and a half. And it has this as unofficially our 14th first down. Swango doing a great job of clock management. The handoff to Deming. Deming around the left side. He's still on his feet. Going to be brought down about the 30. About a six-yard pickup. Eh, mm -hmm. Looks like maybe seven. Yeah, it looks like seven. Yep, seven-yard pickup. It'll be second and three. Ball sitting on the 27-yard line of the Apaches. Six forty to go here in the contest. Swango to Fervita. Fervita around the right side. Fervita tripped up, but he should have enough for another Rice Lincoln first down, and he does. Give him four. Four. Yep. I have Fervita for uh, six carries for fifty-eight yards. Lots of yeah. participants in the backfield tonight. It's going to be tough. Coming up in the post-game show being brought to you by the Ugly Truck Tree Service. We'll also have the headliners of the game and the Rochester class player of the game. Swango rolls out to throw. It's complete to Fervita. Fervita into the end zone. Touchdown. 23-yard touchdown pass. Nice job. First touchdown pass of <laughs> Yeah. Of his career. 23-yard pass. Two for two for 26 yards and a touchdown. Swango to Fervita. And the Zebras will go for two. Swango will bring the play in from the sideline. Swango up under center. Five on the play clock. The handoff. The fervent up. Two-point conversion. Good. Good. Fervent against the touchdown. Fervent against the two-point conversion. I handle just like that on the In Your True Value scoreboard. It's 44-19. Zebras lead it. 6-19 to go. Back after this. Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. What was it, Val? Touchdown by Furman in the uh, nice pass. Wallace with a blooper punt, but that may be zebra football. Well, he says he was down by on the knee. Coach Schaefer going to question that. Both officials are talking to the oh, same ball back. Never had a possession, I think. Scoring drive brought to you by Rochester Ford. It was a 23-yard pass. Swing go to Fervita. Fervita with a two-point conversion. On the Andrews True Value scoreboard is 44-19. That was the Rochester Ford scoring drive. Wallace that time popped it up in the air. And, boy, I yeah. thought that the Wallbacks fumbled that. And in most situations, the, and bit, maybe they're not used to that, but most situations you would fair catch that. Right. 
Six sixteen to go on the two value scoreboard. Forty four nineteen. The Apaches have it. And they go trips to the far side. Twins in here, obviously trying to uh, move the ball quickly. Right back out of the shotgun. Right pressured out of the pocket. Throws on the run and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Grant. And nice job there by our defensive line, flushing him out of that pocket and making him throw on the on the run. You got to give credit to the defense. Boy, have they adjusted well. Third, second, third, fourth quarters here. You know, Coach Schaefer said earlier they were worried about the secondary. Haven't seen a team yet this year throw this much. And the Zebra defense has uh, come up solid. Yeah, they have. Sophomore quarterback, Isaac Wright, six foot one. He's going to be an athlete to contend with the next couple of years. Coming from the backside, gets it off just in time to Grant. Completed. 89, that's Ethan Brooks. Just plowed over to Wright as he got rid of that one. Brooks slow to get up. Excuse me, Wright slow to get up. Completed pass, and it only went for about four yards. It'll be third and six. Trips to the near side now. Twins to the far. Brooks to throw. Brooks unleashes it. Dow to right to unleash it to Brooks. Complete at midfield. The first down for Wabash being brought to you by Rice Lincoln in the Warsaw. Five and a half to go here in the fourth. Hurry up mo offense for Wabash. Right out of the shotgun again. Turns to his left, throws it out. Drop pass. And it was intended for number 80. That is Hackworth. Hit him right between the numbers and Wright just kind of throws his hands up into the air and says, I can't believe you dropped that. Yep, I have him um, officially, was it 17 for 26 for 200, 289, 290 yards. 5.22 to go. He's resetting his offense. Play clock down to four, and Wallbash is going to have to call a timeout. And the sophomore quarterback very upset in the backfield for yeah. Wallbash Apaches. We'll take a timeout as well with 5.22 to go here in the contest. It's 44-19 on the in True Value scoreboard. Back with more Giant FM Sports at RTC TV. 22 remains on the clock here at Barnhart Field. Zebras lead at 44-19. Scoring update from Peru. It's Tigers 33, North of Miami Warriors 0. Right out of the shotgun. Penalty flags fly. <laughs> and it'll make it second and a five. Procedure against the Apaches. Yeah, but that just, that, that really hurts because you just had a timeout. You know what you were going to do. Everybody, everybody should be on the same page. It's a second and 15. Now the ball sits at the 46-yard line. Yeah, that was that was their fifth penalty of the game for 35 yards. 44-19, zebras a lead. Right out of shotgun. Got to be flushed out of the pocket again. He rolls to his left, looking, looking. Throws to a man wide open, and it's complete. And it's going to be a first down for Wabash. The catch was to number 80, and that is Hackworth. And it's first and 10 from the 36. Right again out of the shotgun. Turns to his left, fires right away, and it's complete. Diving forward is number seven. That's Dylan. Dylan on the reception. First and ten. Wallbash just in a hurry up. Completed under five to go. Right, flushed out on the run, throws it, and it's going to be caught. Caught. Complete. Out to Dylan again. As he falls out of bounds, and it's another Rice-Lincoln first down for Wabash. Inside the red zone being brought to you by Farm Credit Mid-America, securing the future of rural communities and agriculture. 
Wright throws that one, rushed that one, throws it to the ground. The intended receiver was Grant. Broken up that time by Slosher. Clock stops with 4.43 to go here in the fourth. Yeah, I have him unofficially uh, 20 for 30 for 337 yards and, and three touchdowns. Trips to the near, twins to the far side, right out of the shotgun and gets the Zebras to jump. And it'll be second and five. That'd be Rochester's fourth penalty of the game for 20 yards. So second and goal from the five now for the Apaches. 4.43 to go in the fourth. Right, looks to his right, throws it, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver was Jared Brooks. That stops the clock at 4.38, third and goal. Well, the one thing that's kind of nice, that it, it, you, you have to only defend about 15 yards. You have the five yards and you have the end zone. So keep everybody in front, but not, give them, not get too much cushion. They bring the whole house to the near side, right. Throws it out to the flat. It's overthrown, incomplete. It'll bring up fourth and goal. Fourth and goal, and they'll go for it, obviously. Yep. And you're right, because they brought everybody to this side, and they actually left, you know, they left Luna out, uh, Luna out by himself out there on, on an island, one on one, but they went away from him. Out of the huddle. Nice sin and Grant to the far side, and we got a whistle and a timeout as Coach Schaefer wants to make sure the defense is set because once again Wabash is coming out bringing four receivers, and he wants to make sure that everybody understands where they're going. And I mean they just need the five yards for the touchdown, so you really don't want to. Give up that yeah. easy. You you got to make them earn it. Yeah, and they kind of switched it. They brought again. They brought everybody to the right side here, and they sent Grant over one on one with Luna to, yeah. to thinking maybe they had an advantage. Maybe go that way, and, and and see if they can throw the ball up in the end zone for like a jump ball area. Again, coach's corner coming your way tomorrow morning here on Giant FM. As we'll talk to Z-Red Coach Ron Schaefer, Culver Cavalier head coach Mike Zayner. They are in action tonight. We haven't got a scoring update from them though. And also in action is Caston and Will Porter. He'll be joining us tomorrow morning as well. So I hope you can. Coach's Corner, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning on Giant FM. Next Friday night, we're back here at Barnhart Field as the Tipton Valley Vikings will come calling. Ringing the bell, the bell game. Next Friday night here at Barnhart Field. I hope you can join us. 6.30, free game, 7 o'clock kickoff. I expect to see a large crowd. Yes. Good crowd tonight for the Zebras, so let's do it again next Friday night as well. 4.34 to go here on the Inner True Value scoreboard. They do bring it full house. They split it up the middle. Incomplete turnover on downs. Great job by the Zebra defense. I'm not sure if they don't have Mr. Zach Wright a little frustrated as well, and he rushed a couple of those passes. Yeah, he did. And he was upset with himself there. Because he, he, he knew he missed him, but just a little bit high. But I think we caused that because we were right. getting in his face on, on when he was trying to throw that. So now the Zebra offense will have it first and ten from their own five. Got a little work to do here to uh, get out of uh, deep in your own territory. But again, as, as we've shown tonight with our running game, you the Wabash cannot just key on Deming. Swango. Gives it right back up the middle to Deming. Deming's off to the races. Deming across the 40, the 45, 50 at midfield. 45 of the Wabash Apache is finally going to be brought down at the 40. Ta uh, touchdown 50. tackling save by Antonio Grant. 55 yards. That's right. Yeah. No. So he's on the five. He was on the five. And now 45. he's on the 40. 45 for 55. 55. Yep. 
55 yard run that time. <laughs> I didn't even, I'm, I'm listening to Val, and I, I, I know things, and I do, yeah. don't think about it, but he just, earlier this quarter, Mr. Deming has gone over 1,000 yards. yards for the season. <laughs> and we're only in game four. And that was before he added that 55-yard. Coach Schaefer bringing in the second squad. Starters get a nice round of applause by the fans. Good job, guys. Good work. And that will bring in Mr. Owen Prater. He'll run the offense in the final four minutes and 12 seconds for the Zebras. Unofficially 509 yards of offense altogether. Yep. That's what I have. Wow. Ooh, Meadows. <laughs> Meadows is met at the line. He'll go the Meadows wrong way. It'll be a loss of downs, or excuse me, a loss of yards of two. It'll be second and 12. 335 and counting here at Barnhart Field. The Inyards True Value scoreboard 44 19 Zebras. This is good because I don't think they have, have they got very many JV games in? Uh, no, they got, I think the Wallbash one has got canceled for next week. Handoff goes around to the right side to Hook. Dylan Hook, he'll get back, looks like a yard of that. It'll be second and, or third and 11. No, they did win last week. We'll have to ask Coach Schaefer about okay. that. But I believe the Wallbash game for the JV squad has been canceled. 36 nothing. Timothy Valley, a final. Over the Manchester Squires. That was at Timmy New Valley. The Vikings here next Friday night. Prater up under center. Prater the handoff around the right side. <laughs> Not sure who got that carry. I think it's Meadows. Meadows again. Yeah. He picked up about two. It'll be fourth down and about nine to go for the Zebras. Nathan right Beck will come in. Yeah, he just got a big block on that play, oh. and the, the sideline went crazy. Prater will come back in with a play, fourth and nine. 2.05 to go here in the contest. Zebras lead 44-19. Meadows behind Prater. And goes in motion. The handoff goes to 28. That's Devin Basham, and he goes around the right side. Picks up about three, four yards, but not enough. It'll be a turnover on downs. And Wallbash will have it first and 10 with a minute 48 to go in the contest. Zebras leading 44-19. Ray Davis, Randy Wink, glad you could join us here tonight. Coming up at the post-game show. Being brought to you by the Ugly Truck Tree Service. We'll have the game summary. We'll talk about the headliners. Game summary brought to you by Woodlawn Hospital. The headliners brought to you by Steve Moore Insurance. And we'll have the player of the game being brought to you by Rochester Glass. We'll have all that in the Ugly Truck Tree Service postgame show. Right. Still in. Out of, out of the shotgun. He does the handoff, and that handoff goes to number 48. And I don't have a 48. No. Isaac Val White. says it's Isaiah White. Isaiah White. Okay. Isaiah White is number 48. Clock continues to roll. 120 to go before the Zebras can celebrate three wins in a row. When's the last time that's happened? It's been a while. And as I say it, Val starts looking at it. <laughs> Handoff is to White again. White around the left side. He's going to be met right back at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third. He'll pick up one yard. It'll be third and nine. Under a minute to go. Zebras will move to two or three and one overall. Two and one in the Three Rivers Conference. 
Wallbash will drop to 0 and 2. Or excuse me, 0 and 3. This being their first conference loss. But the one thing they have, you know, the quarterback <laughs> two more years. Yeah, no kidding. Right, he unleashes one going deep, and it is going to be incomplete, broken up by the Zebras. Intended receiver was, can't get his number. Great job of the Zebra defense getting back. It'll be fourth down and nine now for the Apache. Oh, that was um, 24 seconds to go. Intended receiver 17. Is that was uh, Andrew Dillon. Dillon, okay. Twenty eighteen season, six and up. That was the last time they had won that many. The punt is a high punt. Gonna hit about the thirty-five. Roll down to the zebra thirty, and that's Whoa. where the zebras will have it. With one last time, fourteen point five seconds to go. Zebras will come in and take a knee and get out of this thing with a victory. Well, good job tonight. We did, like again, we, we the, whatever adjustments we made at halftime, we did a really good job there. Um, and and again, I, I can't say it enough, but our offensive line tonight just dominated the, the line of scrimmage. I did. I think that's that's a big, big. And if you think about our defensive line, did too because we only gave up. If yeah. I looked up here real quick, uh, we gave up 11 yards rushing. Prater in to take the knee, and he does, and that'll do it. The final tonight, the Zebras win it 44-19. As the Zebras, the clock strikes zero. The Peru Tigers defeat North Miami by a final of 40 to nothing. We'll have more finals for you coming up here in a little bit. But again, the final here tonight on the Inert's True Value scoreboard. Zebras defeat the Wabash Apaches 44-19. Back with the post-game show after this. You're listening to Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4.